Hello, my name is Jupiter Hadley, and let me introduce you to the unofficial Game Maker Meetup, a monthly meetup event where we have talks around the many aspects of game development in general, as well as with Game Maker Studio, along with casual discussions and socializing with game developers. The meetup is organized and run in our spare time by Quang DX of Asobi Tech, Juju Adams, and myself, Jupiter Hadley. More info can be found on Twitter at GMM Meetup or Facebook on the unofficial Game Maker Meetup group. Here's one of our wonderful talks. Next. Um, oh, first we have Zach. Zach is going to talk about Voxlot and Game Maker, as you can see. Behind us. Um, Zach is releasing a game next week called Spartan Fist, which he's been working on and off on for three years. Um, he's a professional Voxlot art maker, uh, which is something that's quite rare, even though Voxlot seems to be very popular right now. So Zach has a lot of wisdom he's going to share us with us today. Yeah, there we go. That's the right one. Uh, so yeah, Voxel Art and Game Maker. The reason why I'm saying it's the one weird middle child is because they're t it doesn't really make much sense. You would think Game Maker, it's, it's, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought already. Uh, Game Maker is pretty much uh, pixel art and 2D stuff. So, and in Voxel Art's purely 3D, so you don't really think that they would mix. But I'll explain how that works out. And it's thanks to the community, really. I've, I've just kind of just jumped in and said, hey, let's try this out. So, who am I? Uh, I'm Zach. I'm a voxel artist for five years, about. Just passing that now. Uh, and, and I've worked with way too many game engines. Uh, with voxel art, you tend to work with custom engines. That's what everyone wants to do. It's like, I want to make the next big engine that's going to be for voxels. And it's like, please, don't. No. Uh, it's, there's already enough engines, as there is, uh, that are supported. And it's just a matter of making those work with what you have. And that's what we're going to be going through today. Um, I've worked, now I work extensively with uh, Unity, Unreal, and now I want to work more with Game Maker. Because that'd be fun. Uh, why? I like researching. So for the past five, well, five years, every month I like to do little stints of research on how to make voxel art different, how to find different, like if, either if it's strictly art, so you would do just something strictly artistic research, or sometimes what I like to do is to do more tech-related research with the art so that I can figure out how to use Vox art in a different way. If I set new limitations, what does that mean for the art itself? And then, so it, you're going to see results of that with Game Maker as well. And like for a, a good example of what I'll be doing is what people do with Pico 8. Uh, people have been doing a lot of Pico 8 programming and art with, uh, with the 2D engine, and it's nuts because it's, and it's kind of funny because Pico 8 also has a Vox, Voxatron, which is the voxel engine, but then, they made a voxel engine within Pico 8, so it's like, okay, sure, yeah. If you want to make it complicated, go ahead. And yeah, so we're going to go two ways. We're going to talk about first uh, the technical limitations, so what tech we're using and what's, what that entails. And then we're going to go with the artistic limitations. This feeds into this. They kind of go hand in hand. They can only go hand in hand. So yeah, the tech. There is the render tech, uh, and which is what Juju made, called Handy Tools with a few other people. And then there's the SMF 3D skeletal animation. This one I've only learned about in the past couple of days, so I haven't had a chance to mess with it, but the idea is that uh, it's going to make it possible for you to do proper uh, skeletal rigs in Game Maker, which is nice. Though, I'm really curious to see what that entails for like performance, because I like we Juju and I tried um, doing it with just frame-based stuff, and that, that went pretty well, but Whenever you involve a skeleton, it always gets really tricky on the performance side. So uh, with the tests that were done, we figured out various things. Um, on a medium, medium end hardware, uh, try, the maximum try number that it can render in a single instance, uh, well, not instance, but like in a single s sitting would be a million tries. But it's a little much. So we figured, OK, well, 500. 500 runs pretty smoothly as well, all at 60 frames a second, uh, but then Figured the best thing to do is to go as low as possible so that you can set a hard limit for yourself. And then if you want to add anything more on top of that, then that's when you realize, OK, we, we can make it fluffy and beautiful without sacrificing performance. So we're going to go with 100,000 tries. And I'm going to explain to you what exactly tries are uh, for the uninitiated, since I assume a lot of you guys are more 2D oriented. Um, a try is, tr well, it's, tri it's short for triangle. And a triangle is what a polygon uh, gets rendered as. Um, but voxels aren't triangles. They're cubes. And they're only rendered as cubes. So it's like, how does that work? Well, 
Originally, a voxel would just be a straight up cube and it would be rendered as that and only that and it wouldn't have anything else. It would be the 16, the 16, the, the various faces and then you would get, then you would, uh, and then it would render out its own way. Every engine handles it differently, but with the engine, as soon as we go in 3D, we're gonna have to cut it so that every face is actually two triangles and that's why a voxel, a voxel is rendered in 3D if using a standard 3D engine and not a voxel engine gets painful because you can only do so much until everything just gets sacrificed uh, artistically because of performance. And now let's get dirty onto the art, uh, art side of things. So it's just art test after art test. I've tried various uh, art styles and see how we can go about this. The one on the left is what I would consider the dirtiest in that uh, it's very bumpy. It's the shadows, you can see a lot of them and it, it's, it's nice to look at, but it's just a lot going on. And then we have on the other spectrum, something very simple, very clean. And I'm gonna go into a fair amount of detail on each of these. So this one, this is how it looks with all the tries rendered. It's messy, it's, it's, I think it's awful in terms of, of how, it, I would not want to make a game that looks like this on the back end because uh, it would just hurt my eyes. But uh, yeah, so it's, as, I, as I said here, it's painful and most likely unusable on the long term. You can't really expand on that. If sh the one scene itself has 26,000 tries, and sure, that's not really much, but when you look at it on the, the larger end, when you start adding in uh, proper shadows and you start adding in all the render tech around it, it gets extremely expensive. And uh, when it comes to animation, in this case, because of the, the aesthetic that was built right there, it's very pixely. So you're gonna wanna go with a frame by frame uh, animation system. And what that means is that every single time you choose a new frame on a, on a, on a mesh, so like this little bird here, it's going to, Re, you're gonna have to re-render another bird and hide the old one. So it, it gets expensive because you have to keep calling for something to come up. And that's not, it's, it's nice to look at, but it's always the, the thing. It's nice to look at, but it's just not fun. And your programmers are always gonna go, can you not do that? I don't wanna, <laughs> please, I'm suffering enough. And so, yeah, that's, this is what I would consider a little bit dirty. So when, when you're gonna go with cleaner, much easier to read. I'll explain this in a moment. Um, but it's, it's, cle it's cleaner, it's manageable, expandable. You can add more tiles to it and it won't look like it's gonna suffer much. Uh, all of this is actually just 1,728 tries, but I can assure you most of it is this little thing here. Uh, what this is, I didn't get a chance to clean it up. Um, I exported this as opposed to these as pure, vo uh, pure voxel mesh. So every cube is drawn, which is why it's extremely expensive just so I can get a nice curve, because I would export that into Maya, and I would bend it, and then I would re-export that out. There's, already, there's, there's a way to clean it up so that it can be reduced, and it can be reduced fairly significantly. So I can, bring, I can easily bring this down to somewhere around 600 tries, which is fantastic, because in, in an engine like Game Maker, which I wouldn't say is ideal for 3D, it, you, you kind of want to be as lenient as possible with performance. So the lower the tries you have, the better, so the engine itself can handle it uh, as optimally as possible. And yeah, so those, those are the extremes for various reasons. They're both below 100K, but why one over the other? It's, it's really a, a question of your artist, artistic preference, but I like to put performance over, pre, uh, over the artistic preference strictly for the performance. Because players, as a game, in the medium of games, you need to take that as a priority because players are gonna want something smooth, something not, uh, like fun to play all the way through. You don't want them to start suddenly getting drops and it's, it's no longer enjoyable, regardless of how good the game looks. So that's why I had those two extremes. You can find somewhere in the middle. I think that's perfectly fine. Personally, I'm actually uh, looking to design a game that would work well in Game Maker uh, using Voxel Art, that would be fun. And I'm gonna take my time on that. It's gonna, eventually I, I'd like to release it, that'd be neat. At least something tiny, a little prototype would be good. Uh, but yeah, the reason why you wanna go as low as possible, so you can add fluff, you can add juice, you can make the game feel complete without having to sacrifice anything. And that's the ideal. I, don't, I didn't really get too far into the implementation. Everything needs to be exported as an OBJ, but when it comes to implementation, it's dependent on the tool itself. Handy Tools uh, is very early into its development. And uh, Juju and I spent the uh, spent a day, part of a day, not even a full day, to make this. Um, it's a match three, well it's more a puzzle game because we 
kind of lost out on the actual match three mechanics. But the idea is that it's using frame-based animation. It's using uh, tweening and programmatic uh, rotation. Uh, and yeah, so that just to show as much of a game as there can be. And yeah, I think it went pretty well. We did it very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah, probably se yeah, seven hours about. And uh, it came out quite nice. There's a single light source. With the more light sources you would add in, you can make it look nicer. And because of how low this is, these are little cassettes. So they're not rendered, and they're very flat. So they're not really, there's not much to render out. And uh, they're a lot easier to manage. Um, and b to show the, the example of the two animation styles is to sh essentially say like, hey, it's possible to do the two. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, forgiving things. Like I didn't, I could make the arms easily bend and move, but then I would have to do a bone animation, and that will get expensive. Uh, and having the head, you just split the mesh, cut it at the throat, and just bob it, and it, it worked. The idea was that we were going to do a like music timing to this, which is the head, the head bob, and then the cassettes pa uh, disappear when the timing hits the line. And uh, yeah, that was the idea. We didn't really make an act the proper game that we wanted initially, but it's a game, which is, uh, which is fun. But yeah, hopefully this could feed into more people using voxel art with Game Maker. I'm gonna do more research with it and try to make little projects with it down the line, but hopefully that helped everyone out, because uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> oh yeah.